Hello and uh, welcome to the 36th District Democrats. We are here today to interview Dale Katsera, who is running for Seattle City Council District 6. Dale, over to you. Uh, thank you and thanks for having me and for making the time. Uh, my name is Dale Katsera and I am running for District 6. Um, I'm a political newbie. I've never run for office before, but uh, I uh, have watched the city over the past uh, 10 years since I moved back. Um, go through a lot of changes, and some of them for the good, and some of them for the very troubling. And um, as I have kind of watched all these changes, I've uh, I've also been somewhat uh, concerned that the response by the city government, by the city council, has not been significant enough, and has not really addressed the these deep seated problems. I think in many ways we're using old tactics that may have worked. 20, 30, 50 years ago uh, for problems that are much more complicated now and that, that really deserve a new approach and uh, a, new, a new tactic. And so, and a lot of these big issues uh, are interwined together, uh, homelessness, public safety, housing, all of these things kind of dovetail back to population, diversity, and it's a, a bit of a, a knot. And uh, I think that uh, why I'm running is to try to add to the conversation as we discuss these issues over the next few months and try to find a way to um, untie that knot and find some policies and some approaches that might work more effectively than they've been working uh, in the recent past. And I'll give back 30 seconds of my time. <laughs> Okay, hey, uh, question uh, one, uh, is it in the chat yet? Um, yeah, Clayton, why don't you ask this question? What steps will you take to ensure that the city remains safe for all, including black, indigenous, and LGBTQ plus people while keeping police accountable to elected leadership and community? Well, it's, um, <clears throat> it's a, a very, key central question. And public safety is one of the key things that I think has the city scratching its head collectively over the past 10 years or so. It's something that affects all of us. It's something that deals with um, a variety of things. If, if there is increased public safety, then people feel better about going downtown back to work. If there is increased public safety, people feel better about opening businesses and in particular street level businesses, smaller businesses. And if there's public safety, people have more confidence taking mass transit. And so a lot of the things that we can do and are doing, there's a lot of you know, small things and big things. Some of the small things are uh, just building bridges between city government and communities, between the police and communities, and between communities uh, amongst themselves. Uh, I lived in Los Angeles for a number of years. And while it's a very diverse city, it was also a very balkanized city, a very divided city. And I think that anything we can do to bring people together and to really take joy in diversity is a good thing. There's also, also things that we need to address with the police department. I think we actually need more police officers, but I think it's very important that we have a very defined lane for the police and that they stick to their lane. I think that transparency and things like body cameras can be very helpful uh, and ensuring a, a certain degree of trust and a certain degree of accountability. I also think that we need to address <clears throat> the behavior of cops <clears throat> in the sense that uh, when something bad happens, is that simply a cop having a bad day or is that a police officer that has a, a temperament that probably isn't appropriate to be a police officer? And there's some other things we can do as well that uh, maybe we can get to later. Hit the bell on that one. <laughs> yes, you did well. Um, how would you ensure the city has an updated climate action plan? And what specific actions would you prioritize to get us back on track to meet Seattle's Green New Deal goals? Uh, that's... Um, it's, it's another problem. It's not really the highest problem on my priority list because I don't know that climate change is something that is that the city government can do a heck of a lot about. Um, that's more of a national and international issue. 
But what the city can do is make sure that we're doing our part. And I think that comes down to ensuring that we have robust uh, codes, building codes, so that buildings are well insulated, that we have programs to insulate older buildings that are not insulated. I live in an older <laughs> place that isn't terribly well insulated. Uh, I think we should do what we can to get off oil for home heating. Uh, if we can kind of replace that with um, better uh, systems, electrical systems, then that's uh, a, a good step in the right direction. Um, unfortunately, as climate change happens, there will probably be more people in Seattle uh, wanting to install air conditioning. And that's going to be a bit of a problem because that's a, a huge power, um, uh, power cons consumer. Um, so I think that there's a lot of stuff that city can do in small ways, make sure our the fleet of public vehicles is electrified, encourage uh, electrical charging stations that enable people to buy electric cars and get around the city well. Uh, again, making sure that transit is electrically based, making sure that um, things like uh, the, the, uh, the use of fossil fuel and the use of natural gas can be gradually replaced um, right now, there's a lot of people that love cooking with gas, but I think that uh, they can easily adapt and learn that, that, that there are other ways to cook. We're going to have to kind of nudge these kinds of behaviors at the local level, and I think that's where city government can really play a role. I feel like I'm in a boxing match. Like, <laughs> Round three. <laughs> Round three. The Move Seattle levy is set to expire at the end of 2024. The next nine year transportation levy will go before the voters in November 2024 to begin in 25. What investments and improvements would you prioritize for the next transportation levy? Well, I think uh, in general, um, I'm not a huge fan of huge transportation projects. I think that Seattle has done some great projects in the last 10, 20 years. And we're finishing out a lot of great rail projects, but I'm also of the opinion that we need to perhaps even take a pause in big projects and future tunnels and things like that, and focus on the things that really affect a lot of the people every day. Uh, I think our roads are in terrible shape and our roads should be, our, we should be really prioritizing getting some roads paved. If you live in Ballard, you know how bad the roads are in Ballard. And it's not just Ballard, it's all over the city. There are some really crummy um, maintenance issues. I think that where it does make sense is to replace certain um, infrastructure with more uh, accommodating infrastructure. And I'm particularly thinking about the Ballard Bridge I think that it's um, hitting its kind of end of its life cycle. And I think that it could be widened, raised, and made uh, into a multimodal bridge that accommodates pedestrians, bikes, cars, and trains. And that we could have a, a train system that um, reaches into Ballard without going through a lot of uh, the Herculean kind of experiences that have, uh, I think, traumatized the city in many ways between uh, the dismantling of the Alaska Way Viaduct and the building of the tunnel and a lot of rail and a lot of other construction downtown. So uh, I would I kind of err on the side of uh, making sure the city is working well right now before we bite off another another giant project. Uh, Judy will ask the fourth question here. Um, Judy, yes. let's yeah. the, uh, the city has been in a homelessness state of emergency since 2015, yet our homelessness crisis has not receded. What are we doing wrong and what steps would you take to address the crisis? Well, this is, uh, this is one that's of particular interest uh, to me. Um, just coming back to Seattle and, and seeing the, the stark realities of, uh, of a terrible homelessness system and also living in LA for a while where it was 
even worse and uh, really concerned me that Seattle was heading in the wrong direction. And one of the things I think that we're heading in the wrong direction is that uh, we don't have a service agency that is up to the task to meet the needs of this population. And if you look at the yearly one night out counts, particularly the counts from uh, pre-pandemic, it kind of divided people, the, the homeless population up into chronically homeless and into kind of housing unstable. And the chronically homeless folks were severely debilitated by mental illness, drug addiction, alcoholism, and so forth. And yet we really don't have a program that specifically targets that population. We have now the human services, the Department of Human Services, I think contracts with over 200 social service providers. And I think that what we really need to do is to realize that we need a social services department that is funded and it is on a par with the fire department, for example, that has facilities and staff and that can really be able to reach out to this population and bring them into custody if need, needed and to provide a long-term inpatient treatment if needed. And I think that if we can do that, uh, that will greatly help the, uh, the other part of the problem, which is the housing unstable. And those folks need public housing. And I think that we have to uh, just kind of uh, step up our game and recognize that we need to start getting into the housing business. And I think that the uh, recent social housing uh, initiative that passed is a good start to that. Hey, um, that's the end of our prepared questions. We will now open up the floor for anybody who has um, who has um, follow-up questions. Um, these will have one minute answers. Uh, does anybody wanna go first? Judy, go ahead. Yeah, what uh, is your background? What in your background do you think is particularly applicable to the city council job? Uh, probably absolutely nothing in my background is applicable to, uh, to government, but um, I do have passion and interest in it. Uh, I uh, grew up in the Northwest. I um, attended the UW and majored in journalism. I worked at a variety of uh, arts organizations here in Seattle and also down in Los Angeles. And then I got into the entertainment industry as a screenwriter. And I, uh, in recent years, I've come back and I've uh, worked in a variety of writing, marketing writing capacities for the, either the tech industry or the healthcare industry. And on the side, I write novels. And I also have written a book on a mid-century Seattle architect that involved a great deal of research. And that really kind of fueled my uh, desire to kind of uh, look at the city and see how I can uh, help in this capacity. Yeah, uh, thank you. Next question, I have Shep. Or... Sorry about that. I was on mute. Uh, if I understood you correctly, you were saying that you thought uh, people who are homeless and uh, addicted or with mental health issues should be forced into treatment. Um, given the current laws, is that correct? Let me start there. Uh, I think that if someone is in the throes of a severe mental illness or drug addiction and they're on the streets, then yes, they should be taken into protective custody and probably go, go through a civil commitment process. Given the way the law is written for civil commitment um, at the state level, how would that work? Uh, currently, it's you know, uh, seventy-two hour hold, yep. and then if there's a court that finds that person still um, gravely disabled or um, harmed to self or others, then it's you know up to two weeks. Yeah. And then there's another hearing after that. So how how do we how how do you do well, this? It's true, and I think that one of the one of the you know bridges that we do have to cross with this problem is that we need uh, to accept the responsibility that it doesn't have a good solution for a lot of these folks who are living in the throes of these disabilities. There is no good solution for them. Either we are going to take them into custody and put them into treatment, 
or we're going to let them live on the street until they uh, break a law and are arrested and go into the criminal justice system or until they overdose or until they are hit by a car or are killed by a, another homeless person. And there's hundreds of deaths every year in these homeless encampments. So I think of these two bad choices, the issue of civil commitment is, is easily the less, the less bad choice. Uh, it would require you know, probably changes and adjustments at the city, at the state level, as well as the city level. Uh, Toby, you Yes. Next. Hello. Uh, inclusionary housing is a mechanism that requires low-income housing in new buildings when up zones occur. Would you support that? And if so, how would you make it happen? Well, one of the one of the problems with housing is that uh, Washington State has very um, law how land use laws that are very favorable to landowners, and so it's very difficult to address the issue uh, of what a building is used for. Uh, I served on the Northwest Design Review Board for four years, and we reviewed a lot of housing, a lot of apartment buildings coming through coming to the Ballard Finney area, and there's no we had no power to you know, suggest, you know, the size of the units, you know, having some family units with two bedrooms, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, you know, I think that one of the reasons, one of the ways that we can actually address this is for the city through this sort of um, social housing initiative to get into the housing business a bit and to, with the idea that you're going to build housing up for uh, multiple income levels, and not just for the lower income, for a variety of levels. Hey, um, Amanda, why don't you go next? Yeah, um, I believe you mentioned uh, that we sh we needed more police officers. And I wonder if you can clarify in terms of whether you mean additional budget or, or hiring for the budgeted police officers we already have. And then specifically, what is a city councilor you, you can do to address that? Well, I think the city council has a lot to do with budgeting. And, and so through the budgeting process, we can make those recommendations. Um, but in general, I, I think that things would actually be better if we had more officers and we had, again, a very defined lane for the officers. There's a lot of officers now that are on patrol individually. And I think that's actually a something of a recipe for disaster as opposed to officers that uh, patrol in pairs. Uh, and I think that there's a, a, a certain de demand even in uh, high crime areas for more police officers. So I think that there is the demand for it. I think that, you know, we should make the accommodation. And I think if we actually had more police officers, we might be able to avoid a lot of police officers working extreme overtime situations. <laughs> I hope that answered the question. Yeah, sorry. I, I was uh, just looking for the un unmute. Um, uh, we have time for one more question. I have a question, but if somebody wants to, Clayton, do you want to jump ahead and ask yours? Uh, you're on mute if you're trying to ask it. Thought. That is a thought. Um, if, if it's true, that this country is a profoundly racist country. Um, and if it's true that we have um, 10 to 15,000 people who are homeless, um, then, then I, I see, um, and if it's true that we have um, a massive national problem with the brutality of police in their behavior towards minorities, then I see a contradiction between your prescription for uh, arresting people who are homeless um, and, and the need to retrain uh, the police in such a way that they're just a little less racist in the way that they treat minorities. Um, I, 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 
I see I I see big trouble <laughs> with with that with that drift of thought. We cannot have a platoon of cops going down Third Avenue arresting people um, uh, by the score. Um, if for no other reason, then we don't have a place to put them. So I, your thoughts, please. Uh, sure. Well, first off, I would not, I do have not proposed and would not propose platoons of cops arresting homeless people. I'm not talking about that entirely. I don't think we should criminalize homelessness or mental illness or drug addiction. I think what we need is a social services department. So there may be social service agents walking up and down Third Avenue asking people if they need help. There may be social services people at Harborview so that when someone comes in on an overdose, they aren't just restreeted. They aren't just shown the door once they're stabilized. They would be taken into custody and put into a treatment center. So the job one of this would be to actually build treatment centers. Now, King County is trying to do that. They've passed a big initiative. I, I think it's a good start. I think it's a very expensive start for a very few number of beds. I think the state has dropped the ball on this because they're closing down parts of Western State Hospital. But basically, it does start with that capacity. Thank you. Hey, um, well, that's all the time we have um, today. So we'll uh, stop recording and then um, I'll just give you an overview on.